What's up guys, Nerdy Noob here, and welcome to my first edition of Cooking with Nerdy Noob, yeah! I've done a lot of cooking videos in my vlogs, but I've never done an official cooking video, and really I don't know how official this one's gonna be. I brought my nice camera down, so we'll see how this goes. I know it's a little bit echoey, and really it's like facing just like over there, which is unnecessary. What if we were to turn the camera like this? Is that a little bit better? Yeah. Anyway, um, in this video, I feel so far away from the camera. In this video, we're gonna be doing our very first HelloFresh. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and insert the clip of when I received the box so you guys can see what the box looked like when it got shipped to my house. So insert it right now. I just got my HelloFresh box in, my very first one. I used that $60 gift card thing that came in my Loot Crate box to get it at a discount. Um, this is three meals, and each meal technically is supposed to feed two people. They didn't have a one-person meal, so it's okay. I figured I could use leftovers. So I opened the box. It just literally arrived, <clears throat> and it comes with, it came with some coupons for some other boxes. They have like a wine box, but basically it has my three recipes. So I got cherry balsamic sirloin, and that has Herb roasted fingerling potatoes and roasted Brussels sprouts, so that looks pretty good. And then I got a creamy, dreamy mushroom jameli. I don't know what that is, with scallions and parmesan. It looks like basically like pasta with mushrooms, so that looks good too. This is not what I picked. I didn't pick meatloaf. That's weird. I'm pretty sure I picked a pork dish, but I got meatloaf. So I'm not quite sure what that's about, but I like meatloaf, so that's cool. Uh, this is meatloaf with roasted root veggies and thyme gravy. So I think that's not what I ordered, but I'm okay with that because I do enjoy meatloaf. And on the side of the, um, the recipe, there's instructions, step-by-step -step instructions. We're watching the football game, so I'm gonna have to do this quickly. Um, it comes in an insulated bag. Oh, and everything is really cold. And each meal comes in its own bag. So there's the sirloin. So like when you open this, I'm sure there's going to be like individually wrapped things. I'm actually not going to open it right now, but when I cook one of these things, I'll, I'll show you what it looks like. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, today's the first time I'm trying to cook one of these meals, and I'm actually going to do the meatloaf. I did order this meatloaf. I, the original like recipes that I thought I'd ordered. Those are the ones that are coming next week, but this was one of the first ones that I ordered. I'm gonna try making this meatloaf dish right here, and we'll see how it goes. It's fairly straightforward. They give you all the instructions, and I pulled out all of the things that I needed to pull out that are in addition to what they sent me. So I have my medium bowl. I have a grater-ish. I don't know, yeah, this is a grater, right? Yeah, yeah. We have a peeler. A baking sheet, but I only had a really small one, so hopefully this is big enough. I have olive oil. I have a medium pan. Look, this is one of my new pans. I haven't used them yet. I washed all of them and put them away, but I haven't used them yet. And then I have some butter. I have the oven preheating right now to 450, and let's go ahead and pull out the bag of ingredients that they sent me. All right. The other thing they didn't tell me to have is a knife and a chopping board, but I looked at the instructions and I know I'm gonna have to cut some stuff. So this is what it looks like, the bag. So this is meatloaf a la mom, and it came with a pack of ground beef. The way they did package this, the, the meats were in between two ice packs, and then the bags were on top. So we're gonna go ahead and open this. I haven't opened this bag, so I don't even know what the items are gonna look like. In theory, there should be some carrots, potatoes, shallots, thyme. Oh yeah, basically. So we have, the ingredients for this are thyme. Should I get closer to the camera? Sorry. Thyme. We have these little carrots. These are interesting. We have a potato. We have some garlic. Some beef something. We have panko breadcrumbs. Oh, this is so interesting. We have this, oh look at this little, we have this little teeny tiny jar of ketchup. I'm totally saving this jar, that's so cute. We have our shallot. It's a little bit bruised up, but that's okay. Oh, this is kind of, actually, I'm gonna peel this a little bit. It feels, not. I'm not gonna say rotten, but kind of. Oh no, you guys, my shallot is moldy. Uh, 
Dang it. Hello Fresh, you're not winning bonus points from me. Look at this. My shallot is moldy. I'm thinking that we can either, it's pretty bad. I was gonna say maybe cut the top off and use it. You know what I'm gonna do instead, so I'm not gonna use it, I'm gonna throw this away, but I just happen to have onions right now because I was gonna make Japanese curry. So I'm gonna switch these out and just use maybe half an onion to replace this one shallot, but that is disappointing. I don't know if I'm, I don't know guys, I don't know. And then we have some flour, that's for the thyme gravy. All right, darn. I'm gonna use this bag as my compost bag for when I, like for this rotten um, shallot. That is gonna go in the compostable bag. All right, let's go ahead and get started then, shall we? I'm just gonna go ahead and follow these instructions and we'll see where it takes us, I suppose. The camera feels so far away. I know you guys probably wanna see what I'm doing, but I, I really just want like to be closer to you guys. I'm not used to being that far away. Okay, so the first instruction on here is to preheat the oven, which I did. The second thing is to wash and dry all produce. Oops, okay, let me do that now, pause. Okay, I think all of my ingredients are prepped and ready to go, I think, so let's go ahead and start. It says half and peel shallot. So I peeled my onion, cut it in half, and I'm gonna go ahead and half that. So I'm gonna set half of that aside, and for the first half, I'm going to grate one half with the grater into a medium bowl. I've never grated an onion before, so I don't actually know what's gonna happen, but here we go. Okay, I don't know, you guys can't see this probably. Maybe this camera angle. Okay, let's try this. This seems ridiculous. Is this a grater? It's just melting it into like liquid. Is that what's, the, look at that. I've never, ew, I've never done this with an onion before. Is this what it's supposed to look like? It's like liquid. Ew, it's like mush. It's falling apart. What is this even for? Oh, it's for the meatloaf, I see. Why can't we just have regular sized onions? So I've never, like literally, I've never grated an onion and I didn't realize that this is what it does to it. It just turns it into like liquid. This is probably not the best grater. This came in my free, not my free box, but that box that was like for college students or whatever. Okay, well, that looks good. So there we have our grated well, it's supposed to be a great shallot, but I used an onion because, you know, my shallot was done so. Mince the other half and set aside. Okay, so let's go ahead and mince this one. I actually don't know what it means to mince. I'm assuming a, a, a fine chop. There are my minced onions. What's next? Minced garlic. Oh man, <sighs> so much work. Just kidding. Just kidding, that, that was a joke, that was a joke. I actually love cooking, I just don't cook a whole lot anymore because I just don't have a whole lot of time. But it's one of the new things, or not new things, but one of the things I try to kind of tell myself for this year is to try a little bit harder at spending more time cooking. Because I actually like, I will say that I'm not necessarily a super huge fan of shopping for the food, but I love cooking, like I've always loved cooking. It's always been a huge thing to me. Um, my parents cook all the time and I just, it was something that I picked up and, and uh, in college I cooked a lot and it was really nice because we had so many people living with us that was cool because I can, I tend to cook for like a lot of people. Like I don't know how to cook small meals, I just cook a lot of big meals. Oops, I just cut a carrot on accident. One of the coolest things about running our after school program is that we would do snack for the kids and every so often we'd kind of do fancier snacks and it was cool because that was like my chance to cook kind of for, for more people and uh, you know, get creative and stuff. Okay, I minced the garlic. I'll say that it's not super minced, but whatever. Okay, I minced the garlic. I'll say that it's not super minced, but whatever. Gosh, there's so many things I have to do that I'm like leaving on the cutting board, but I don't have that much space on my cutting board. So this is kind of interesting, I would say. It says to strip the thyme leaves. I'm gonna hold off on that because um, I don't have anywhere to put them. So it says to cut the carrots. Let's see, toss carrots with draw olive oil and drizzle and spread on one side. Okay, I'm gonna half these carrots. Oops, I didn't, oh geez. 
I've never, I don't usually cut carrots like that. Ooh, make sure you have a decent knife if you're doing this because if you don't have a good knife, I can imagine this being pretty difficult. I don't think my cookie sheet is gonna be big enough for this. <laughs> I don't know why I don't have a full size cookie sheet when my cookie sheet is like a mini cookie sheet. Okay, my carrots are halved and then I need to peel and cut my potatoes. That's what I'm gonna do next. I just made the realization that you're probably not here to watch me necessarily, you're, watch, you're here to watch me like actually do stuff, so I just changed my camera angle, so let's see if that kind of works out better. Thanks for sticking with me on this. I kind of just don't know what I'm doing. So now I'm cutting the potato into thin strips like french fries, although the strips they show don't look very thin. They look fairly fat. Should I make them thinner, do you think? I'll make these ones a little bit thinner. Now my cooking is gonna be all uneven. I should have used a bigger cutting board. Ooh, the video's kinda dark, sorry. Okay, everything's done except for the time. I'm gonna hold off on that. Oh, cause I wanna clear up my board. So it says, toss carrots with a drizzle of olive oil and spread on one side of baking pan. Toss potatoes with another drizzle of olive oil and spread on the other side. Season both with salt and pepper and then roast. 20 to 25 minutes, oh that's such a long time, okay. Well, let's see if we can do this. Is this all gonna fit on this pan, do you think? It's gonna be a tight squeeze. Usually when you're roasting vegetables, you don't wanna necessarily like crowd the pan. They kinda crowded the pan though in their picture, so I guess it'll be okay. Okay, let's go ahead and just put some olive oil on those. And I'm gonna just use my hands to kind of toss them. All right, we're gonna go ahead and salt and pepper these. I really like heavily seasoned food, so I'm not gonna tread lightly on this one. And then we are gonna go ahead and stick this in the oven for 20 to 25 minutes. Oh, you can't see, but here I'm putting it in the oven. I set the, uh, oh no, you guys, what happened? I left some potatoes out. Those ones aren't gonna have any oil. <laughs> That's terrible. Okay, so it says, we're making the meatloaf now. So in the bowl, we have our grated shallot. We're gonna add our panko, our ground beef, garlic. So we can do the garlic now. What am I doing with these onions? Oh, the shallot goes in the gravy. Okay, so we're putting the garlic. We're doing the panko breadcrumbs. So we'll hold off on that. So now we need to do the thyme. So let's go ahead, strip these thyme leaves. Thyme is one of my favorite herbs to use. Okay guys, I messed this up a little bit. I should have done the time earlier because I didn't realize that, I thought that the meatloaf was gonna go in with seven minutes left, but it's supposed to go in after the veggies have roasted for seven minutes, so I messed that one up a little bit. So I'm gonna quickly chop these. There's a little bit of stems in here, I can see them. Hopefully that's not too terrible. Okay, so we're supposed to put half of this in here. So half of this in the bowl. Great. We're gonna put the panko. We're gonna put the ground beef. Okay, okay. Was I supposed to put, I'm gonna put salt. pepper, and now we're gonna gently mix this, and then shape into two one inch tall loaves. I've actually never made meatloaf before. One time I tried, it didn't, it didn't work, so then I just never tried again. Okay, we have 20 seconds to do this, you guys. So at least these are all, it's all mixed for the most part. And then we're gonna do two one inch tall loaves. That looks like about one inch. This loaf is a lot smaller. Let me take some of that actually out. Okay, now we're gonna remove the sheet from the pan, give the veggies a toss, then brush the tops of the loaves with the ketchup. Okay, pulled these out of the pan. We're gonna go ahead and give these a quick toss. Keep in mind there's a couple of potatoes that have no oil or salt on them because I forgot to put them on the pan originally. We're gonna put our loaves 
on the pan. Ugh, there's not enough space. My pan's too small. Note to self, get a bigger pan. And then we're gonna go ahead and brush, brush the top of the meatloaf with ketchup. I have a brush, although this is a really big brush. I have a smaller brush. I'm gonna use a butter knife. And before I do that, I'm gonna season the meatloaf just to give them some extra seasoning. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's put this back in the oven. Oops, I just read if your sheet is crowded, you can add meatloaf to a second sheet. I messed that up too. Jeez. Okay, we have our pan on medium heat. I'm gonna go ahead and put the butter in there. I did add a little bit of extra butter. A little butter never hurt. We're gonna melt the butter down. And then we are going to, whoa, that's happening really fast. Add the shallots and the thyme. And we're gonna cook three to four minutes. Okay, our butter is all melted. Let's go ahead and add the shallots. And the rest of our thyme. We're gonna cook this for three to four minutes. I have a gas stove, so um, I feel like the fire is a little bit stronger than usual. If I had more time, I honestly probably would have added more time to this. I probably wouldn't even mind adding some lemon. Mm, I love making gravy, guys. It's one of my favorite things. One of the later steps says I'm gonna have to have a whisk, so I'm just gonna pull the whisk out now. I think definitely if you're gonna do this, make sure you read ahead and like prep everything because I just realized that I'm gonna need half a cup of water. Had no idea. I think these are pretty well softened and cooked. I'm gonna go ahead and add my flour. And then it says to stir vigorously, you wanna make sure you cook that flour. So we're basically making a roux right now. My stove is so powerful, it's so strong that the onions are starting to brown, which is fine. Never hurt to have brown gravy. Okay, we're gonna whisk in our concentrate. Oh, this is delicious, as well as half a cup of water. This is in essence deglazing in our pan as well. I need to get me some of that beef concentrate. Ooh, that's delicious. We are gonna let this bring to a simmer and let bubble until thick. Three to four minutes. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and let that simmer down. I love gravy. I could literally drink gravy if I if I wanted to. Actually, I do drink gravy. I don't know why I'm acting like I don't drink it normally. Like, I would have made triple this amount just so I could drink the gravy. Okay, this has been simmering. It's pretty thick. I'm gonna go ahead and add salt and pepper. And I'm actually gonna turn the heat off because I don't want all of my gravy to evaporate. It's very buttery because of the butter that I added, which makes sense. Okay, the meatloaf is almost done. I'm gonna reheat my gravy because I, I turned it off, it was cooking too much. The gravy definitely thickened up a lot. The gravy might be my, my favorite part actually. All right, let's go ahead and take this out and see what it looks like. Okay, as you can see, my potatoes aren't super well cooked. I don't even know if these are cooked. They're cooked, they're not the greatest. But here's what my food looks like. Let's see if we can plate this and make it look like theirs. How do my carrots turn out? Mmm, carrots are good. My meatloaf's plumped up. I hope they're cooked inside. If one's not gonna be cooked, I think it's gonna be this one because that one's kind of short and plumpy. So let's take this one. And this is technically supposed to feed two people, so keep that in mind when you guys are um, making this. I think I probably put too much oil on my vegetables. Okay, this is what it was supposed to look like. Ta-da! It looks fairly similar to the picture. I didn't sprinkle the gravy on because I, I'd rather dip the gravy. My, my gravy's so hard right now, I probably could, um, or really thick, I probably could add more water to it. Oops, I made the gravy too salty, but it's delicious. So let's go ahead and try this out. The potatoes are definitely not roasted like they should be. That's my fault. I needed a bigger pan but they're soft, and some of them 
Some of them have a crispy outside, some of them don't. Again, my mistake. Ooh, hot. The carrots? The carrots are nicely roasted. They're very soft, it's really good. Okay, meatloaf. Meatloaf looks well cooked. One of the pieces has a teeny bit of pink in it, like a medium, nothing crazy. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. This is my really quick meatloaf because I only had like two minutes to put it together, so that was my bad. Mmm. I probably could have mixed the meatloaf a little bit earlier to give the panko some time to like mix in there, but it's good. And it's really good with the gravy. Here's a bite with the gravy. Mm-hmm. Mmm. Okay. So what's my bird? My bird is, I like this a lot. I eat a lot of food. I'm not going to say that I eat all of the food, but now I at least have leftovers if I don't finish it. I will say that I was quite stressful trying to cook and film, so I'm going to have to figure that out because I think I would have enjoyed it a little bit more if I wasn't trying to film, if I'm being honest. But all in all, I'm very happy about this. I'm excited to try the steak one that I have because I love steak and I love cooking steak. So really the only thing that was kind of sad was, one, I wish I would have listed because I needed water for the gravy. It was in the instructions, but I wish they would have listed it on the left side here where it tells you like bust out the butter and stuff. The stuff that you need for like that did, it didn't include. I wish that they would have put that here because that's what I used to prep all my items. And then of course I wish that the shallots weren't moldy. <laughs> that would have been nice, but it's okay. It happens when you're using fresh produce. Anyway, guys, I would give this a thumbs up. I can't wait to try the other meals. I'll keep you guys up to date on how, which meals are the best. Um, I might even do like a live stream or something. We'll see how it goes. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it and hopefully I'll have another episode some point. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. Alright, see you guys later. Bye!